Why do you love me? Such meaningful, beautiful questions. Yeah. <sighs> Look into my eyes and describe what you see. I see fantastic makeup. Um, but obviously, <laughs> we are trying to go deeper than that. I see somebody who honestly gets me in a way that I don't think I ever thank you enough for. Mm -hmm. And it's so bizarre to me because we have such different, different realities in so many ways. And we were raised in such different ways. But at the same time, like, as soon as we're together, like you just know it's family. Or we're the same and person. Think that, yeah, we are literally the same person. <laughs> I, w I was thinking about this last night, just being shocked at how alike we are. Um, and I was like, it had to be like this because I had to see enough of my story in you to trust you. And I also learned so much from you from the parts that are different from me. So it's, it's almost like looking in a funhouse mirror, you know, <laughs> it's like, I recognize myself, but different. I feel the same way. And I think when we first reconnected, I was 17, I think. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't really understood enough of my story at that point. And because of that, I was a lot more hesitant. And, you know, I didn't, trust you enough at that point because we were strangers in so many ways mm -hmm. but then like a few years pass we're still talking to each other we're still seeing each other when we can and then i don't even know when it happened but like i don't know it just clicked at one point and i was like yeah this is my cousin kaylee this is, it's not like I'm telling somebody, oh, I went to see my cousin Kaylee. Like there's this big dramatic like history. We're trying to work things out. It literally just became, I get to hang out with Kaylee. And I, I think I needed to grow up a little bit before I was able to do that. When do you feel the closest to me? Oh, I think I know this. <laughs> when we're eating dessert. <laughs> That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> Um, or those nights on his deck. Yeah. When everyone's gone to sleep. <laughs> um, <sighs> okay. I, I have a question. Ooh, this is a good one. What are you hesitant to talk about with me? Ooh. <laughs> um, no, I made that seem more dramatic than I think it has to be. <laughs> I think for me, a huge one that I've been holding in for a little while uh, is like my own very, very internalized fat phobia. Mm. And it's something that I haven't even thought about in years. Mm. It really isn't. But I remember early on in our reconnection, things like that, when we would discuss like, yeah, your weight, and that's not fair in any regard, you know? And it was usually a comment. And I would say something like, guys, like, I'm fat too. Mm -hmm. And they would be like, yeah, but you're not as big. Right. And rather than call them out on that, Instead, I said something along the lines of, like, like, don't let me get that big. Yeah. And I have been so sorry for that for so long. Oh. And, but, but, like, yeah, I didn't want to tell you because I genuinely, like, even as it was happening, I realized, like, that is not actually the view that I have. That is like something coming out because I'm still trying to distance myself. I'm still trying to remove myself from that, mm -hmm. from you. 
and it was just easier to do it in a way that society has ingrained us to do. I don't want to tell you how to feel, but you don't need to feel badly about it. Um, I, it's nothing I haven't heard before. <laughs> um, and, and I, I've long since decided that what someone says about, about my body only says anything about how they feel, not about me. And you've even taught me stuff about that. Like when we were in Victoria, I was at a particularly like low self image moment. Um, and I was like, Oh, well who would want to date me anyway? And you said that is some white person bullshit. Like, stop it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and and I think about that whenever I feel like no one wants to be with a fat girl. Um, I think like that's some white person bullshit. Um, and, and how many people do I need to date before I convince myself that that's not true? You have taught me so much about, you know, I don't want to call it body positivity or body neutral neutrality or whatever, but just in general, like I'm allowed to exist. Mm -hmm. I'm allowed to be fat. I'm allowed to expect to be treated as an equal. What is your biggest fear right now that you haven't shared with me yet? And what can I do to support you better? Oh, the broader part of it is just losing people like people dying. I'm yeah. not good with, but I worry about Bubby dying all the time. Um, I know we've talked about that a little right now. I'm super worried about it because we can't be there. Um, and so I've coped with that by just not talking to her, which is super productive. Um, and so I, how you can support me in that, I guess, is just like talking about it with me. And I know we're both really worried about losing her. Um, I mean, she's in her 90s. People don't live forever. Um, I just really hope we don't lose her before we can all be together again. Yeah, me too. You know, she believes that she will be with our grandfather. Whether I believe that is true, no, not necessarily. I think we all have very different ideas of what happens after life, that's everyone does. But I'm willing to support her in what she thinks will happen. Mm -hmm. How are we most similar and how are we most different? Mm -hmm. Well, we're most different, I think, just that although we have very similar interests and perspectives in a lot of way, we did we were raised in two different cultures. Mm -hmm. And I think a large part of that is I was raised being proud and identifying strongly with being Jewish, mm -hmm. not religiously, but culturally. Whereas from what I understand, that was sort of like not, not a comfortable area for your family. Yeah. And as well as that, I mean, I was raised in Iqaluit, I'm Inok. Like being Inok has been a huge part of my life. Being indigenous, that's, that shapes me in so many ways. Whereas you were raised in a place where there's a lot of racism towards indigenous people. Uh -huh. And I think that you've definitely like shown time and time again that you are not somebody who's going to subscribe to that. Yeah. And I think you've worked very hard to ensure that you deconstruct those internalized things that you were raised around. But I think it does inform how, how we interact with other people, if that's... Mm -hmm. I know that that's very hypothetical and bizarre, but I do think that you and I are so similar in so many ways, but we interact with the world and with people differently. Mm -hmm. And how we have relationships, how we form relationships 
uh, is very much shaped by the cultures we were raised in and the families we were raised in. I think we both just, we just, we both want to heal. Yeah. And I think we understand that we can't just heal ourselves. Like for us to be healed, for human beings to heal, they need to be in a healthy environment. Mm -hmm. And they need to help their community get to that healthy environment. And sometimes I think we try too hard at the detriment to our own health to ensure that the people around us are able to get the support and what they need. Um, but at the same time, like, I'm so grateful that we share this because we can learn from each other. We can remind each other to take, take what we need for ourselves as well. Oh, I don't like this question. It's sad. If this were to be our last conversation, what is something you never want me to forget? You've always been family. You are enough as you are. You don't have to prove yourself to us to be part of this family. You don't have to act a certain way or be a certain way. You are, even if you were a completely different human, you would be enough. Mm -hmm. I would want to tell you, thank you. Like, I, reaching out a hand only works if someone reaches back. And you've, you've been open. You've, like, challenged yourself to get to know me based on who I am, not how people talk about me. Um, so and thank you that has been so healing because i didn't believe that people would do that for me yeah. i do also want to say one more thing and it's probably not my place so feel free to tell me to just like get over myself okay your father loves you so much <sighs> i i know me saying that isn't gonna make it stick anymore, especially when he himself has a really hard time showing it. Or saying it. <laughs> or saying it. But I truly think that he's proud of you. Thank and you. And I think that, I mean, all of us are. There's so much to be proud of. You are literally one of the coolest, kindest, most hardworking people. So, there's a lot to be proud of. He's proud of you. I'm proud of you. And when you don't feel like you can be proud of yourself, that's okay. Cause I'll be proud enough for the both of us. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for knowing that I need that too, because because yeah. my real dad doesn't. <laughs> yeah. I genuinely feel like, this was a very good thing for us to do. You know, it sucks that we can't be in the same room right now. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But this will do until we can safely and happily be together again. It's true. It's true. Yeah. Hey, everyone, if you like the conversation that was sparked using our questions, Try it out for yourself. We have a relationship card game deck for every relationship in your life. I can't hold them all because we have more than I have hands for. Um, so go to theskindeep.com slash shop if you want to check it out. And thanks for watching.